All right. Now for the induction portion of the evening. Paul? I turned the screen off, but I dropped the remote in the thing. So there's the information if you guys want. To. <clears throat> On their own, Akila Edmondson's athletic accomplishments are Hall of Fame worthy. She led Port the Port Huron High girls basketball team to three district championships in her four years as a player becoming the first in school history to score more than 1,000 points and is the school's all-time leader in steals and assists. She was a first-team All-State selection, captain of the Detroit Free Press Dream Team, and finished in the top 10 of the Miss Basketball voting her senior year. She attended Michigan State University on a full-ride basketball scholarship, and in her senior year was named the team's most improved player, helping the Spartans to a Big Ten title and a trip to the NCAA tournament. In her one season as head coach of the SC4 women's basketball team, she took the Skivers to the national tournament, where they finished eighth. That is a true Hall of Fame resume. But if you talk to anyone that knows her, it's clear that Akila is a truly a Hall of Fame human being. Leah Humes, one of the star players on that SC4 team, who was about to begin her final season at Ferris State, said Akila was what you would call a superwoman. She said she was like our mom, a mentor and a coach, all in one. Akila is a social worker in St. Clair County, and George Popa, her former coach at Port Grand High, said that's no surprise, as she has always shown deep concern and compassion for others. Popa continued, Akila Collier Edmondson, in my opinion, embodies everything you could ever want from a Hall of Fame candidate. Well, George, we agree. Ladies and gentlemen, it's my great privilege to announce tonight's first inductee to the Support Your Own Sports Hall of Fame, Akila Edmondson. Good evening, everybody. I'm Akila, as you heard, and I did prepare a speech because I didn't want to get up here and ramble, so bear with me. First of all, I'd like to give honor to my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, who is my source, my life, and my strength. Through him, all things are possible. I wanna thank the community members of the Port Huron area for always supporting me through my athletic career. Athletics has prepared me for life lessons. Through athletics, I've always found a safe place to release my energy, the tone that I used to have, I wish I still had some of that as I get older, but also a place for me to deal with stress and work through my struggles. My self-esteem was built up through participation. I found acceptance through playing sports, and by God's grace, I was good at most of the sports that I participated in. I learned to never give up and to invest time into getting better. I learned, how, I learned how to win with a humble heart and also to accept defeats, but also to look at those defeats and figure out a way to improve. Through athletics, I have met some of the most amazing people who have gone on to become my mentors, my friends, and still are major supports for me. I like to thank a few. To my family, words can't express my thankfulness. To my loving husband of 16 years, I thank you now for dealing with my competitive spirit and my aches and pains that I bring to you regularly as I still try to compete. <laughs> to my mother who is not here, but she is alive and well, I'd like to thank her for instilling a great work ethic in me. She taught me that God is first, family is second, academics is third, and until all those three things in order, I would have to make sure I did that before I could play anything or any sport. To my grandparents, my grandfather has gone on, but I still have my loving grandmother, Dorothy Collier. They taught me how to live my life for Jesus. They invested in my spiritual and physical well-being. 
They made countless sacrifices so that I will have great opportunities. One of the examples was my grandfather was a pastor and on Sundays I would have AAU practices. And it didn't matter how much work he had to do at the church or what the weather conditions were, we got in the car and he took me to every event regardless. That showed me that I was important and that my activities were important and no matter what, he would be there for me and I still have my grandmother to thank for that. <clears throat> to my pastor, and late pastor, and my pastor now, who is now also, she is also my aunt, Mary Meadows. Thank you for your prayer, your counseling, your spiritual guidance. Thank you for being a great example of how to live my life for Jesus. To all the teachers and school personnel from Roosevelt Central Middle School, Port Huron High School, and Michigan State University, thank you for pushing me expecting me to do well and not settling for any less. Thank you also, Mr. Crittenden, for correcting me when I was off track. For those of you that don't know, my middle school years, I was a trouble kid. I was a leader that could turn the school upside down. And there was one particular incident where I got suspended for, and Mr. Crittenden pulled me aside and he talked to me like he was a parent. He reminded me a lot of my grandpa and showed me that I should respect myself as well as the rules. And that meant the world to me. He was more than just a disciplinarian. He took the role as like a family member and I appreciate you for that. Coaches, uh, many of you are in this room, Mr. Mosier, Ms. Falk, Mr. Rodenbaugh, and Mr. Popa. And if I've missed anybody, I'm sorry. There's more people than I can name. I want to thank you for making me sp feel special. Thank you for the difficult workouts and pushing me. I thank you for speaking, into, speaking life into my soul. You all knew just what to do to bring out the best in me. You cared about me as a person first. You checked on me. You made sure that I had the tools to succeed. Mr. Popa and Mrs. Popa, if it wasn't for you and your dedication, I would not have gone on to earn a full ride scholarship to Michigan State University. Your extra time and dedication and lifting me up and bragging about me, you lifted my spirit and my soul and promoted me in the way that I don't have any other words to say, but thank you. To all of my teammates, Jody Cameron, my ace rebounder, wind beneath my wind, wings. To all of my teammates, some of you I still may play with, Holly Claus, my derby, my roller derby friend, I thank you for making me a better person and allowing me the opportunity to shine with you. To all of the young people that I may have coached or mentored, thank you, thank you for allowing me to share and invest in you as the Port Huron community has done for me. I am living proof that it takes a community to raise a child, and I'm here to show you that your investments do pay off. It is my prayer that one day, in the work that I'm doing and in the future, that I will be able to pay it forward just like you have done for me. Thank you. Congratulations, inductees. Tonight was my night to be, uh, to be responsible for, and my pleasure to introduce to you my, an old friend and one of Port Huron, Port Huron's best bowlers, Barb LaPlay. Unfortunately and sadly, Barb suffered a stroke this Wednesday, and and she is now McLaren, McLaren Flint and the family tells me that she is progressing. We will continue with the induction tonight as our son Derek is here to accept the award. Let's keep Barb in our thoughts and prayers. Barb is a native of Port Huron, a familiar face in Port Huron's bowling alleys for the past 50 years. She began bowling at age 11 under the tutelage of Cap Emery, another Hall of Famer. 
Uh, Cap thought that she was too small, too weak, and her head, hands that were too small to bowl. Well, Barb grew up, and she became one of the best bowlers in the area. And she, she specialized in doubles. But over the years, she maintained 185 average and had five sanctioned games over 256, four series over 675. Her record includes over 10 city championships and doubles tournaments, a second place in the 1979 state doubles tournament with Marion Hislop, and a 66th place in the 1989 national tournament with Pam Dickinson. But her most memorable moments were winning the city's mixed doubles tournaments in 1968 with her father, and then 40 years later with her son, Derek. Barb's involvement with bowling doesn't stop at the lanes. She has, over the years, been very active and involved in local and state governance of bowling. She's held positions in Port Huron Women's Bowling Association and the Michigan Women's Bowling Association. And she's been active in our community's big brothers and big sisters and visiting nurses programs. She was the first woman to serve on the Port Huron Sports Hall of Fame and held the position of secretary. I would at this time like to ask Derek, her son, and her longtime bowling partner, Trish Dufresne, to come up and accept her mother's award. How's everyone doing tonight? Everyone doing good? Um, I know this was all last minute um, um, because my mom had a stroke um, this past Wednesday. Um, um, I, I know my mother would be, uh, uh, um, you know, very upset if I uh, kind of ruined her speech because I took a speech class this past summer, and if she was upset with me, oh, I mean, not only if she was upset with me, then that's. 500 bucks down the drain for class of textbooks. <laughs> um, she wanted to mention a few names, um, uh, but I know she wants to mention e uh, everyone um, that has influenced her in the sport of bowling. And she traveled around the country and um, to bowl in all these bowling tournaments back in, uh, um, you know, from 1960s up until now. Um, but the specific names that she want to mention um, are Marion uh, Hislav, High Slav. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm terrible at pronouncing names. Um, she, she wants to mention uh, Dorothy McCor. Um, um, she also wanted to mention me. And, um, <laughs> and, and her longtime bowling partner, Trish DeFrank. Um, my good buddy, Matt Langolf, and uh, um, her, um, her loving husband, uh, Denny LaPlay. And, and, and Kay Wagner. Right? And um, she wanted to make the speech short and sweet. Um, and, and so will I. Um, but I just want to mention this. There is no place in the world that she wants to be anywhere but here. This is the first place she wants to be at, and she would be um, happy to be here. And unfortunately, um, my dad um, is, I mean, he's not here. Um, he's in, I mean, he's with my mother right now just to be with her. Um, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just, uh, um, um, if there's anything that you want to mention. Um, no, not really, I just wanted to mention a funny story. <laughs> Barb and I have bowled together for years, and there's a little bit of an age difference between us. And, uh, when I was thinking about our years together bowling, 
Barb was mentioning maybe five, ten years ago that she had to buy a new pair of shoes. <laughs> and uh, she looks down and, and uh, she said, I bought these shoes in 1972. <laughs> and I said, Barb, I was six years old when you bought your shoes. <laughs> but that's a testament to Dexter, they make great woolen shoes. So, uh, but it, it's, been, it's been an incredible time. But bowling with Barb, the best part of bowling with Barb is when she talked about her kids and her grandkids and the pride you could see. That's the best, regardless of tournaments, how good, how bad. We, we, we talk about the accomplishments, there were a lot of non-accomplishments as well. Uh, she, very proud when she talked about her family, and that was the best part of being around Bob. And second to that would be this night, because this means the world to me. So thank you to Logan Eastman for the nomination, and thank you to the board for making it happen. Thanks. Thanks, everyone. It's my honor and privilege to uh, introduce our next inductee to the Class of 2017 Four Yard Sports Hall of Fame. Uh, Terry Mitchell is a 2003 grad of Four Yard High School where I was fortunate enough to have been the athletic director, assistant principal, and coach there for over 40 years, almost 40 years. Uh, and I just want to um, congratulate the other uh, people here tonight too. In high school, Terry was a three-sport athlete. He was all-conference in football, basketball, and track. He was, on, he was named to the Dream Team. If you're aware of high school football, there's, every year there's a Dream Team come out, which is the high, highest honor a high school football player can have. It's a member of a, a team that's made up of all divisions, of all classes from around the state, and Terry was a member of that Dream Team. He was also all-state in track. Uh, a story that I like to tell is uh, Terry was a senior and he was having an unbelievable game. Matter of fact, he had ran back a, a punt for a touchdown, called a pass for a touchdown, and was just having an outstanding game. And one of the referees was a guy by the name of Luther Bradley. Luther Bradley was a defensive back for the Detroit Lions who had played at the University of Notre Dame. He saw me standing in the end zone where I always stood for all our home games. And he came up to me and says, I want you to call Notre Dame University tomorrow. And I want you to uh, give them Terry Mitchell's name. We need players like that at Notre Dame. Well, that didn't work out for him. But I had another trick up my sleeve. And the fact that I, my brother at that time worked at a place in, in outside of Chicago called Harper College. Um, and he gave, I told him about Terry. And he gave the coach at Harper College Terry's name. He contacted Terry and a couple other players on our team. And Terry went out to Harper College. Well, when he got to Harper College, he had an outstanding career there, including two national championships. And also was named All-American in track. Not a bad career. But that was just the start. After two years at Harper College, Terry transferred to Grand Valley State University, where he had two more national championships in football. So that's four national championships in, in, in football on a collegiate level. I don't think that, that will never be beaten. It could only be tied. And I don't know if that will ever be even tied. Terry's the kind of player that comes along once in a lifetime. I've been involved in, in athletics for over 50 years on a high school and middle school level. And there's probably, I could name four or five guys that I thought were, were, were game breakers. Terry Mitchell was a game breaker. Uh, to quote a, a line from Chris Berman, He's the kind of guy when he touched the ball, he could go all the way, and he often did. Outside of that, Terry's not only a, was a great athlete, but one of the nicest things about Terry was his humility. The way he treated other people, the way he treated the players on the team. He's not only an outstanding athlete, but he's an outstanding person, and I'm glad to have been around him. As, a, as, a, as an athletic director when he was at Portland High School. So without any further ado, Terry Mitchell. Mm -hmm.
probably can get a little emotional for me because uh, it's a big day. And um, I don't know if you guys know Eddie Kendo, but he always told me to tell my story. So I'm gonna tell you guys my story. Um, when I first came to Port Huron, I was going through a lot with my family. My mom ended up leaving me and my brothers up here to be with my dad. And through all that, in and out of prison, living in the house, three bedroom house, 15 people. Uh, me and my brother alternated from the floor to the couch where we wanted to sleep. <laughs> My grandma used to always tell me not to question God, but I just couldn't help it the way we was living. So one day I, I said, I said, God, I'm a good kid. Why am I going through all of this? I said, I don't deserve this. And then the next day at, at basketball practice, God honored him with 20. Tony Jacobs came up to me and he was like, little Terry, you always was a yes sir, no sir type of guy. You always held your head up high and I know what's going on in your life. He's like, I don't have a lot of money, but I have extra room in my house. If you want to come live with me, you can come live with me. And I was like, you know what coach? I don't, I don't know. I don't want to let my grandma down but I hate living where I live. We don't eat that much, you know, but I don't want to disrespect my grandma by just leaving. So weeks went by. I mean, if you guys ever seen the movie Blindside, that was my life. Get into a heat and argument with my, my aunt and just packing up a bag of clothes and just running as fast as I can. And he met me on, I, I ran from Dove in 32nd all the way to Michigan and Lapeer. And, and he was right there waiting on me in the rain, in his car, to pick me up. And, and I always have a smile on my face because you never know what someone could be going through. And if I ever sees anybody down, I always try to talk to them because how I lived, how, how I was treated growing up. Um, so, so Tony Jacobs, Nicole Jacobs, thank you guys for saving my life. And just taking in the kid, they just wanted to be loved. And I want to thank my fiance for always being by my side. Even though sometimes I get a little angry because I was treated, you know, but God never put anything on you you can't handle. So I'm here today to say keep pushing. If you're going through anything in life, if you're down, it always, it's always something better. It always someone's there that loves you and that's gonna smile and tell you keep pushing. You got this. And if you're going through anything, anything in life, anything, just talk to someone. Someone is out there that will listen to you. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Terry. You're a hard act to follow, man. It's, it's pretty hard. Congratulations to all the inductees. Well, I hope you're having a, a great night. You all deserve it. Mr. and Mrs. Price, thank you so much for being here. It's a thrill to have you. Okay. I'm here to uh, introduce uh, our next inductee, inductee uh, Ken Nelson. To say Ken Nelson was a great athlete would be a, a massive understatement. He started his high school career in 1994 at Poirier Northern, earned his letter in track and wrestling, setting a freshman record in the 200 meter. As a sophomore, again lettering in wrestling and track, he was a league champion in the 100, 200, and 400 meter. He was a regional champion in the 400 meter, earning all state honors in 400, racing to fourth place at the state finals. 
as his career continued as a junior, again, now lettering in track and football. He was a league champ in the 100, 200, 400 meter and 1600 meter relay. He was a regional champion in the 400 meter relay. He went all state in the 400, taking second in the state finals. <laughs> Going to his senior year, again, lettering in track and football. He was all area in football. League champ in 200, 416, which must have been like old hat to him. Then a regional champ in the 200, 400, and 1600 relay. Indoor state champ in all state in the 400, taking second in the 1600. His time of 47.33 in the 400 is the ninth fastest ever in state history and fastest non-winning time ever in the state of Michigan. Representing in that, that year, he represented Michigan in the Midwest Meet of Champions and was named Times Herald Track and Field Athlete of the Year. Through his hard work and his determination, he was offered a, a full scholarship to Seton Hall University, known, known as 400 Meter University. He was a four year letter winner, team captain as a senior. He was a junior and senior, all Big East all indoor, outdoor champion in the 416 relay, qualifying for the NCAA meet, which are the greatest runners in the United States. Ken currently coaches in the Crosslex school system and is a teacher, and along with his wife, Amy, have four children. It is my pleasure to welcome to the 2017 Four Year in Sports Hall of Fame, Ken Nelson. Terry, I'm mad at you. <laughs> um, congratulations to all you guys, though. And, um, and as the lone um, Port Huron Northern alumni at the table, uh, I'd like to say good job, Huskies, um, on that football season. Uh, and it's continuing there um, in their playoff win last night. Uh, that's exciting. Um, and also, they've, I don't know if you guys know this, you probably do, maybe half of Port Huron does. They have the best athletic trainer uh, also, and she's my wife, so that's not, that's not biased, but that is the truth. Um, I want to thank the board for putting this together and the nomination process, and, um, and this, is, this is a neat deal that I'm proud to be a part of, uh, so thank you guys as well. Um, I wanted to open up with a, uh, with a scripture, Philippians 4, 13, and, and that says, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Um, it's funny listening to the stories up here, and um, you know, they're very different, um, but yet there's something that's the same or very similar about them all. And uh, I, I have a difficult time believing in myself in a lot of areas. Uh, I'm a teacher now. I didn't think I could be a teacher. Um, I'm, I didn't think I could be a coach, a high school varsity coach. Um, I've had a lot of support there. Uh, a college student. I didn't have plans necessarily to go to college and, and to take that route. Um, but I've always had people in my life that believed in me. Um, and I've had many people reach down to offer a helping hand. Uh, and there's a lot of people on this list. And I just want to thank a few of those. Um, and the first on that list would be my parents. And as a parent myself, and the parents in this room, you know you've never been, you know, you, you can never be thanked enough by your children. Um, but I'm grateful for them, for the hard work that they've put into our family and the family life that we've grown up with um, and the dedication that they have to each other uh, is an example for me that I can live. Um, I also want to thank my family, extended family. I've got a big table back there of aunts and uncles and more aunts and my grandma's there and my kids are here too. Um, they traveled everywhere across the state. Um, I went to school in New Jersey. Uh, they would be at the, they would show up to the meets there. I'm like, my goodness, these people get they got mileage under their, their vehicle. I uh, went 600 miles, 12, 12 hours um, to a snowstorm. Uh, power outages all across the East Coast there, and there was 15 of us in a room, some of us in the hallway. Uh, but that's my family, um, and they've been there every step of my way, and I thank them for that. Uh, another 
important person in, in my life is Martin Proud uh, and his family. Uh, just investing in me and my life. Um, he invested then and in, in high school and now. Um, teaching me life skills that I continue to teach my kids. Uh, taking me up north. The second time I met him, I'm in a van with him and his family and four little ones to go train up north for a summer. And, uh, and I take my kids up there now too. Um, uh, a very important member of this is Craig Dickinson. Uh, if you want to wave, you should know. We, most people know Craig Dickinson, I'm sure. Um, what's neat about this relationship is I was an athlete, he was my coach. Um, I became a teacher and a coach. Um, he became my peer. Uh, and through this relationship, he's now a friend. Um, when, I, when I got this coaching thing again, my belief or confidence in myself, not there. I went to him again and again and time and time again, and I still do. Uh, and I, I thank him for building me up the way he has in this, in teaching and coaching, uh, young men. One of my, one of my favorite memories is uh, Tom Ronbaugh was our AD. Uh, he asked me if any colleges have been contacting me. I'm like, I haven't been getting a whole lot of, whole lot of information. He's like, let me make some phone calls. And him and Craig, you know, worked on that a little bit together. And they pulled me out of class one day, extremely excited. And they, and they told me, they, they said there was a full ride offer available and we got a phone call. I think Craig was more excited about it than I was. And I, trust me, I was excited because I didn't, you know, that's, I'm, a young, I'm a young kid then. Well, but he's still excited, he's still helping. And uh, when he retires, um, we're gonna lose, we're gonna lose some, um, just a, a steady member of, of the track community and the teaching community here. So, and, and not that I'll lose a friend, but he'll, uh, we'll have that. Uh, last person on this list, and certainly not the last one, but my wife. Um, she's amazing. I think, you know, if you know, half the court here and knows that. Um, if you've all that she does, if you know her, if not get to know her. <laughs> she's been uh, there from the start, through high school, college, and now coaching. She allows me to coach, and I appreciate that, and I thank you for that. Um, I would not be where I am today without her in my life, and those that, of you that know us know that's true. Um, and anything I've earned is a, it's a co-honor and it's co-award. Whether it's my master's degree, bachelor's degree, um, and those of you that know us know that's true also. Um, so thank you, Amy. Um, and I wanna thank God for the many people in my life that have given me confidence to do the things that I did not believe I could do. Um, and that I do them and have done them well. Uh, and I want to encourage you here tonight to reach down and continue to build others up because you are a gift to somebody. Um, and, it's, and I'm hearing that through these other inductees tonight as well. Um, so this award is for all those that have reached down and, and helped me up. So thank you. Thank you. I would like to start by congratulating all of this year's award recipients. I have had the pleasure of working with a few of these award winners and know firsthand how hard each of them has worked in the respected sports. Tonight I have the pleasure of introducing to you Melissa Rucker. Melissa Rucker developed a strong passion for the sport of soccer at a very young age. While she started kicking around the soccer ball as a five-year-old, Rucker later became interested and competed in basketball, volleyball, and track. Her skills on the soccer field led to a spot on a 19 and under travel soccer team when she was only 14 years old. The standout Port Huron High athlete lettered in basketball, volleyball, track, and soccer. She received the Times Herald Soccer Player of the Year Award and was the Blue Water Area's first NCAA Division I Collegiate Scholarship winner. Rucker played soccer at East Carolina University and later transferred to Western Michigan University. She was a National Strength and Conditioning All-American, a member of the Athletic Academic Board, and co-captain at Western Michigan her senior year. Melissa played semi-professional soccer throughout the Midwest and later became an assistant soccer coach at Smith College, where she received a graduate 
fellowship to study. Melissa also traveled to Africa as a member of the first Coaches Across, Coaches Across Continents team. While there, she taught health, female empowerment, and life skills through soccer to educators and children while also coaching exercise science. As part of the first coaching staff, she has been invited to return to Africa this summer to attend the 10th annual CAC. Melissa also participated in a cross-country bicycle ride sponsored by Paul Newman's Hole in the Wall Camps for Children with Terminal Illness. Later, she worked at the camp as a counselor. Melissa has coached varsity and club soccer teams in Michigan, Florida, California, and Colorado. While teaching special education in, in inner city Jacksonville, Melissa was named Teacher of the Year. She now teaches special education at Riverview Elementary in Durango, Colorado, and coaches at 13 and under 13 girls select soccer team. This, this year, her team won the Flagstaff Invitational. Three members on that team are currently being recruited by the Olympic development team. Melissa now lives in Duran, Colorado with her husband, Ryan, and their ch children, Rhea, Finn, and Eleni. She continues to enjoy coaching and playing soccer, as well as teaching and sharing her passion for sports with her family and friends. It's my pleasure to introduce Melissa Rector. actually a freshman when Akila was a senior and I remember running in inside the, the school because it was still snowing out when track started and uh, I would always think to myself okay if I can just keep her in my sights <laughs> then to me that meant I won so there were a lot of races that I actually won in my mind um, between me and Akilo, but really I never did. <laughs> um, but anyways, as a, as a teacher and a coach and a parent, uh, I often ask myself, what's the one thing that I can do to most influence growth in my kids or my students or athletes? And the one thing that always comes back to me is relationships. Uh, building relationships with my kids. And for me, growing up here in Port Huron, I had that. I had many adults who took the time to make those connections and build relationships from my parents, to my friends' parents, to my neighbors, to my teachers and coaches. Um, they all made that effort. And uh, you know, it wasn't it's not necessarily any specific game or sport that I really remember but it was times like uh, sitting in the stands at track meets and just talking about life and laughing with Rodenball or being in his classroom as an aide and realizing that this is what I wanna do. I wanna be a special ed teacher and a coach. And um, in basketball, you know, I really only could play defense. And so I would always just try to draw a charge every game because I, not because I liked being run over by somebody, but because, <laughs> but because I knew Popo was gonna make a big deal about it and buy me a Coke at the end of the game. <laughs> and, in, and in volleyball, Becky Falk had, you know, this sarcasm and the way of making fun of us all without really making us feel bad about ourselves. <laughs> Uh, and, and then in soccer, I had one coach from the time I was 14 until the time I was 19, and that was Jerry Friend. And uh, unfortunately, he's no longer with us. But um, Jerry, I don't think Jerry ever played soccer, but his daughter, Jenny, did. And um, so he dedicated years to us and to our team and building soccer in our community and really all the parents on that team. Um, dedicated so much time to us. But Jerry would come out to practices with his giant smile on his face and he would have his green felt soccer field that he made um, and 
football analogies because I think he did play football. <laughs> um, but he would come out and he would put us in lineups that nobody had ever seen before. And nor did I ever see after. But, <laughs> but they, they worked and that they worked because he took that time to build those relationships with us. And we knew that he cared about us as people and he fostered the relationships that we had with each other. Um, and I, you know, that's what kept me coming back to sports were the relationships that were built between teammates and coaches and athletes. Um, and so to all the coaches that are here and that are not here, thank you for that because that really made a difference for me. And to my own parents who now as a mom, I'm starting to realize the, the amount of time and effort and energy it took to let me go out and play. Um, you dedicated a lot of time to me and to making sure I had success. And so I appreciate that and thank you very much. And luckily uh, I have been able to find a husband who is with one of my kids somewhere um, <laughs> who uh, enjoys playing just as much maybe even a little more than I do, but um, he still encourages me to this day to go out and play. Um, so thank you for that. <laughs> um, you know, there's a saying that says, every kid is one positive adult away from a success story. I truly believe that, and it's obvious. You know, we've all kind of said the same thing up here, um, and I only hope that I can impact my kids and my community of kids in the same way that many of you have done for me. So thank you. Good evening. Again, I'd like to uh, congratulate all the inductees tonight, all the uh, other previous uh, winners, and thank the Prices for coming up and uh, visiting with us tonight and putting on a nice presentation. I get to present one of the greatest hockey players that ever came through the Port Huron Hockey Association, and that's Marty Schreiner. He was born and raised in Port Huron, and he played hockey from about the time he could walk. He started to be playing in Port Huron Minor Hockey Association at the age of six. The biggest accomplishment Marty made in the Port Huron Minor Hockey Association was the fact that he holds the record for goals in a single season of 100 goals. There's not even anybody in the NHL that scored 100 goals in a hockey season. He did that at the age of 12. I was fortunate enough to uh, see a lot of those goals because back in the day, uh, when we had both rinks going here in Port Huron, all the travel teams used to play back to back to back on a Sunday. And so fortunately for me, Marty's team played right after the team I was coaching. So I got to see a lot of those goals. Plus the fact that uh, when we all went to tournaments, all the travel teams pretty much went to the same tournaments. So you could get to see them play there as well. Um, after he got done playing in Port Huron minor hockey, he went and played uh, a year abroad, which was in Thornhill or in Toronto for the Thornhill Thunderbirds. After that, at the age of 16, he made the USA select team, which is for the best 16 year olds in the United States. Also the following year played on the select 17. And also that year went on to play for the 1992 US national junior team. After that, he obtained a full ride scholarship to the University of North Dakota. All very impressive. But the next thing he did is he actually got drafted by the New York Islanders in the 12th round. Now in the Poirier Minor Hockey Association, it's been around since about 1959 or 60. So in the almost 60 years it's been involved, the Hockey Association's only had four or five players ever drafted. Two of them have played in the NHL, but just to get drafted is quite an accomplishment. Uh, he didn't make it to the NHL, but he did play two seasons for the New York Islanders Farm Club in Roanoke, Virginia. After uh, pursuing his hockey career, 
He uh, went to college, got his degrees. He uh, got a Bachelor of Science at North Dakota and also got a master's from St. Mary's University in Minnesota. He then taught ninth grade social studies at Northview Junior High in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. He was the assistant coach for the Wysada High School varsity hockey team in 1997 until his untimely death in 2007. As well as coaching hockey, he also coached a girls recreational team in his spare time and he also designed, developed, implemented, and taught summer hockey programs in the Plymouth, Minnesota Hockey Association. That makes a, a person very valuable too because those are the guys that build your hockey programs and create uh, the ability for these youth to uh, play hockey throughout their entire youth careers. It's my pleasure to uh, introduce his brother Matt, who will be accepting on his behalf. to accept this award for Marty. I sat and I thought, I'm like, well, what would Marty do today? Um, I think he'd be very humbled by this award, be very thankful, and, uh, but more than that, he would be really happy to be here in Port Huron tonight at this dinner. Um, Marty loved Port Huron, he loved the Port Huron Minor Hockey Association. Um, he loved uh, coming back, spending time talking to people and he would have really, really enjoyed it. Uh, I want to say thanks to a couple people that uh, were important in Marty's life and helped him succeed. Uh, first of all, our family that came here tonight. Um, most importantly, my parents, uh, who devoted a lot of time and commitment. And if anybody knows what it's like to be a hockey parent, uh, they know what's involved. Um, lots of cold night driving. To, hockey arenas and um, pucks up against your garage and um, freezing in cold hockey arenas. So um, they deserve a lot of the credit and uh, for Marty's success. Um, like to pay tribute to a lot of Marty's former coaches. Um, seems to be a running theme here tonight. Everybody had coaches and parents and other adults that were involved. Um, Marty had a lot of guidance. A lot of people took him under his wing and really helped him out. I uh, mentioned the Portier Minor Hockey Association earlier. Um, probably one of the best hockey towns that I've ever seen with the uh, International Silver Sticks. Um, we had the International Hockey League Portier and Flags. Just a great place to grow up playing hockey. A um, little funny story about Marty's being awarded here tonight for all the goals he scored. Uh, he actually started his career as a goaltender. So um, the way it went was before he was old enough to play hockey, he played street hockey in the neighborhood. Well, we were all six or seven years older than Marty. So we said, you can come, but you can't play. And uh, that didn't last very long. And we were like, all right, you can play goalie, but that's it. And uh, so we took it easy on him at first because we were about seven years older than him. Then when he was saving all our shots and we couldn't score on him, uh, we upped our game and pretty much it, pretty soon it was full on. So when he was old enough to play minor hockey, I think it was six year old Mike, we took him in. I told the coach, I'm like, well, I got a goalie here for you. I, I think you'll like him. And uh, so sure enough, they put him in goal. He plays goal. But uh, fortunately, they had a rule back then, and I'm sure they still do now, but uh, you can only play half the game as a might as a goalie. They don't let you play the full game. And so then when he did play out, he put in a few goals, and we just kind of looked and said, wow, we never knew he could skate or uh, shoot the puck. We were just used to him being in goal. And uh, so kind of ironic story there about Marty. But uh, really proud of him. They had great accomplishments. And uh, thanks everybody for coming tonight. Uh, it's great being the last 
presenter, that means I can go on as long as I need to, right? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I only have two pages here. Uh, um, first of all, I'd like to thank the college for hosting us here and at the Fieldhouse. I don't know if anybody's mentioned that, but we appreciate it. Um, also, I'd like to congratulate the class of 2017 inductees into the Hall of Fame. You're very deserving. It's my pleasure to introduce the 1979 Cornhurn Northern Huskies baseball team and their coach, Larry Colonel Clink. <laughs> the Huskies finished with a 23 and six one loss record. The 23 wins were a school record at the time. They finished third in the ML, that's Eastern Michigan League, with a nine and five record. To this day, they are the only Port Huron school to reach the state finals in baseball. They were, I guess I should have got different glasses. <laughs> Fall off. Uh, I need these, so I need to get them. <laughs> okay, let's try it again. <laughs> in the semifinals, they defeated East Kentwood two to one, and then were defeated in the finals by Detroit Catholic Central. I think it's quite a feat because in 1979, they did not have schools of choice. So being a public school as Northern was and is, uh, you had to take what you had in the halls and deal with it, as opposed to being able to bring people in from other school districts. So that made it quite a feat, I think. Now some people say that the team was lucky I don't think they were lucky uh, because they say, well, they, you know, they were only third in the, in the league and then they end up in the state finals. My definition of luck is when pre preparation meets opportunity. <laughs> they certainly were prepared by their coach. They were a family and played as a team, personal stats aside. Their goal was that pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. All coaches and teams set goals of winning league championships, having winner, winning records, and winning a state championship. But very few make it to that championship game. If there was any luck involved at all, they made their own luck through preparation. At this time, I'd like to introduce the leader of that team, Larry Klink. criticism for potentially talking too long. Uh, I would love to say I went up here and talk for an hour or so and, and talk about this team that uh, is inducted tonight, and, uh, but I'm going to try to keep it short. Uh, first, I, and, and again, I, I wrote down stuff so that I wouldn't uh, stray off and on a tangent, which I have a tendency to do. Uh, but I would like to comment uh, on the inductees and just congratulate you uh, for your accomplishments and for not being afraid to be a Christian. I really appreciate that. <clears throat> uh, on behalf of the personnel that made up the 1979 baseball team, I would like to thank the Hall of Fame Board for voting us into the Port Huron Sports Hall of Fame. I know that Dick Baker and Jim Weimer got the ball rolling and I'm grateful for the tremendous effort to contact all of the members of the 1979 team. Again, thank you to everyone that helped this come true. At this time, I would like to introduce the members of the team. And as I call your name, would you please stand up and please remain standing until everyone has been introduced. The seniors on the 1979 team were Dean Baker, Scott McCready, 
Tony Moncrief, Troy Moulton. The juniors were Dave Herber, Paul Anglin, who was not able to be here, Dave Hill, also I believe not able to be here, Norm Frettenborough. By the way, Norm wanted 40 seconds to say something, so I'm gonna try to work him in. <laughs> Andy Daly, who also was unable to be here, Steve Campo, Pat Pearson, Mike Pearson, Doug Majeski, Scott Fletcher, who also wasn't able to be here. And then the Southwards on the team were Jeff Wiley, Rod King, Mike Petroti, who wasn't able to be here as well. Our stack girls were Michelle Kalish, who wasn't, isn't here. Nancy Norris Marcero, who is here. And Lisa Bonney, also is here. And Lisa Tomczyk, uh, not here. So would you please give these young people a round of applause. Pitching was always number one, because if you couldn't keep, get people, keep people from scoring, you're not going to win many games. Defense was number two, because that goes along with keeping them from scoring. Hitting was three, running was four, and together was the thing. That's what we would say uh, just prior to the start of our games, uh, as well as in practice. So that was... Uh, one of the traditions that that got started very early in the career at Northern. Um, I, I'm going to just comment on a few things, and then if I come up with other things that I like to say, I'll, again, I'm going to try to be short. Uh, this is what I have written down. I know that there were great baseball teams in the Port Huron High Schools before 1979. And I coached many great teams after 1979, and there have been great high school baseball teams in Port Huron after I retired in 1996. But as far as I know, and I think uh, Coach Baker referred to this, no high school baseball team in Port Huron has ever made it to the final game of the state tournament. So what you people did and accomplished in 1979 was an outstanding accomplishment. And at Northern, you set the bar for every team that has followed you. And then, I, you know, I would just uh, like to also just say a couple things that I started writing down and then I uh, changed my mind and, and didn't say anything, but the 1979 team was my third year as varsity coach at Porter Northern. And the first two years, well, my first year I was a, uh, was a JV coach and Scott McCready and that, that the, the were seniors, they were on that uh, JV team. And back then we didn't have any freshman team, it was just junior varsity and varsity. So uh, when you take over as a head coach and other head coaches here can tell this to be true if they took over, there is many times uh, you have culture that you have to change. And there was mutiny at one point, and uh, I'm not sure what year that was, if it was the first year or the second year that I was varsity coach. And as they were walking away, it was late in the season, I said, we will play the district tournament with the JV team and they all turned around and came back. So uh, it, there was a culture change that had to occur. It occurred and the 1979 team was a team that turned the corner. And I will be forever grateful for uh, 
not only them, but for every team that followed. There were kids that didn't come out because of the culture. Uh, <laughs> I was accused of having marathon practices, but those practices were long, but they had to be long because we had to get things done. And I, I, I will forever be indebted to the young men who put in the effort to be excellent uh, in baseball. And we had some great teams at Northern, and this was the one that started it all. I did. So I'm going to continue now. That was an, an ad lib. <laughs> Finally, I would like to say to the members of the 1979 Huskies baseball team that it was an honor and a blessing to be your coach. Being selected into the Point Hero Sports Hall of Fame as a team is an awesome honor as well. But I will wish that I'd been a stronger Christian when I was coaching and teaching so that I could have aided the students and athletes to the make the decision necessary to spend eternity in heaven with our Creator and Savior. God wants everyone to spend eternity in heaven, but he will honor the choice that we make. I wish everyone a blessed evening and thank you for your attention. Great night, and again, I want to thank Mr. and Mrs. Jim Price. Congratulate all the inductees, and in closing, I'd like to present uh, back again Tom Steppel for a benediction. Please have a safe drive home, and thank you for coming out. Hope to see you next year, Tom. Let's bow our heads, Heavenly Father. We thank you for what we have witnessed tonight. It's quite evident that your grace and your mercy has touched many of the athletes here as they have boldly declared their faith in you. Yeah. We thank you, Father, for what you're doing in our great city, and we pray that you continue to do this great thing and do a new thing in our hearts. And I pray this in Jesus' name, and everybody said, Amen. 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 All right. Just this. <laughs> Are you right by...